Ubuntu 19.10 Ian Ehrman is finally out and it's a big deal in terms of the new features it's bringing to you. Yes sir, it's not just another routine release and it comes with major changes and improvements. Even the performance has got a huge boost here. In this video, we'll be having a look at the new Ubuntu, its new features, major changes, what's good and what's bad. I've installed Ubuntu 19.10 Ian Ehrman on my computer, configured it for my hardware, installed all my daily use applications and I've been using it for a week now. So along with giving you an in-depth review of Ubuntu 19.10, I'll also share with you a major shift that's happening with Ubuntu silently that will impact you and the Linux world essentially. This is Linux Techs, let's do this. Jumping in, let's begin with the user interface. Ubuntu 19.10 features GNOME 3.34.1, which has been modified by Ubuntu with its own branding. GNOME 3.34.1 has both visual as well as performance improvements. Here the color scheme is improved to make the icons look much more vibrant. You can see here in the activities overlay, the transparency has been reduced and the dark tint has been increased considerably. This might be a minor tweak, but it does make the activities overlay look much better. The search bar is highlighted strongly now. The icons and even the workspaces look much more dominant on the screen without the distraction of the background wallpaper. The whole thing looks very premium. Ubuntu uses its homegrown Yaru theme here. In 19.10, they have played around with the colors more. The drop-down panels have gone white unlike the darker colors of older versions. This is how it looked in the last version. It's more contemporary and looks good here. The icon pack is more uniform now, although you still get to see some odd ones here and there. Once you install the GNOME Tweak tool, you can play around with the dark and lighter versions of the same Yaru theme. If you are a night owl, go with dark. There have been some performance improvements by both GNOME Desktop as well as Ubuntu here which contributes to a snappier user experience which I'll discuss in the performance section. As far as looks are concerned, Ubuntu 19.10 Ian Ehrman offers a gorgeous desktop with better color schemes this time. And in my opinion, this Ehrman is more cuter than the default one. Top points for the desktop. That's the user interface of the new Ubuntu. Next, let's have a look at the major changes we see in Ian Ehrman. Ubuntu 19.10 is powered by the Linux kernel 5.3.0. This is the newest kernel version available on any of the Ubuntu versions at the moment. But that's not always a good thing. I have the Wi-Fi drivers for my desktop which I can easily install using dpkg and have never faced any issues on Debian or any Debian based Linux distros till now. But it's having problems with this kernel. Another big change here is that Ubuntu provides experimental ZFS support now. It's an advanced file system used in Unix operating systems. I should tell you that 1. It's experimental here, meaning it might cause problems. 2. To use it, you'll need to format your entire hard disk and you'll lose all your data. 3. Most Linux distros won't be compatible with it. 4. I would not recommend playing with it yet. Then there's the light and dark themes available now. To use those, you need to install the GNOME Tweak tool. Just open a terminal, type in sudo apt install gnome tweak tool and hit enter. You can try out these new themes from here. Some time ago, there was a lot of noise that Ubuntu 19.10 would completely drop 32-bit library support. But because of the community backlash and Valve's objections, Canonical has reversed the decision. So your 32-bit applications and games will work absolutely fine here. Now let's talk about the performance. Firstly, GNOME Desktop started focusing on improving the performance of the desktop some versions ago and the results are out and visible here in Ubuntu 19.10. GNOME Desktop has implemented a better caching for desktop components in the graphical memory. I know this might seem very counterproductive to some people who are cautious about how much RAM a desktop environment uses. But in today's date and time, most computers are powerful enough and there's no need to worry about it. In fact, I want my computer to use the memory it has and give me a better performance. And that's what GNOME does here. It uses your GPU memory better now by keeping the desktop assets loaded in it and what this does is gives you a nimble performance and the whole operating system feels more responsive. I have a 4GB video RAM so I'm glad it's being utilized better now. Here the transitions and animations are better and you won't notice any choppiness that was visible sometimes in the activities overlay. The new Ubuntu also comes with official Nvidia drivers out of the box so that's another plus point for the performance. Another great thing here is, after experimenting a lot with some algorithms, the Ubuntu team has finally used LZ4 compression here, which provides faster boot up speeds. You can boot 19.10 versus 19.04 side by side and 19.10 will start up quicker every time. 
So yeah, 19.10 has been an amazing step in improving the performance. I'm really glad to see these improvements. This is an interim release of Ubuntu, which means it's going to be supported for the next 9 months. This version is not suitable for production environments mainly because of the shorter life cycle and bugs. Yes, non-LTS releases do sometimes contain bugs here and there. Now it's not Windows bad, but some inconsistencies in some less explored territories are to be expected because everything is brand new here. But for home users, 19.10 is great. You are getting a shiny new desktop, speed improvements and the latest version of everything. You are good for the next 9 months. Talking about the usability, you are getting a completely ready to use system out of the box. GPU drivers included this time. I like using it. There's a premium touch to the experience of using Ubuntu 19.10. Now let's talk about my not so favorite part of Ubuntu 19.10. Speaking bluntly here, I see a lot of snap apps in the default software store and I don't like it. Here's the thing, let's say I want to download GIMP to slightly edit a photo of mine. So I head down to the software store and what do we have here? GIMP is offered in the snap format mainly, while it's also available in the classic native .deb package in the repositories. Snaps are bulky and slow. Just look at the size difference here. To avoid snaps, you can either install software from the Synaptic Package Manager or the good old apt. Snaps have their place. They have their advantages and they are bringing more and more major software to desktop Linux. I accept and appreciate the fact. But I don't think aggressively pushing them to the users over the traditional apps is good for the user experience. They just don't feel Linuxy to me. Ok, moving on to the brighter side. Ubuntu still has one of the biggest repositories of Linux software. Most vendors officially support Ubuntu and provide packages to install software in a secure and convenient way. In a plain software availability point of view, Ubuntu has a large pool of tested, stable packages and that's a huge strength of Ubuntu. Major points there. Not so long ago, Ubuntu had announced that they would be dropping support for 32-bit libraries in this version, which would have absolutely wrecked the possibility of smooth gaming on Linux using Steam and Wine. Fortunately, the idea has been dropped and Wine, Steam and all the Steam games work fine in this version. And now, Steam's new feature called Proton enables you to play a good number of top Windows-only games on Linux and you don't even need to go through the hassle of Wine setup. So Ubuntu provides an optimistic future for Linux gamers. There was a time when Linux distros were something that you put on old computers that no longer could smoothly run Windows. This expectation did put an unspoken and unacknowledged pressure on Linux distros to support older and legacy hardware. This put a proverbial harness on desktop Linux development in terms of how it looked and what kind of user experience it provided. How much RAM a distro used when idle was a measure of that distro's worth in a way. Ubuntu is breaking that limiting idea and is going strong against all adversities. Its aggressive pushing of heavier snap apps, its attempt to let go of the older 32-bit libraries in favor of a more harmonious system, a gorgeous desktop with stunning animations and effects. These are all a step closer in providing a Linux distro that is modern and advanced. I'm all for legacy hardware support, but I also want a Linux distro which gives me an advanced user experience. You can't be advanced and ancient at the same time. I know I bashed snap apps a few moments ago, and I'm not the only one. But if they are enabling more and more vendors to develop and deploy their products on Linux, why not? It's not perfect, but it is still in infancy. Overall, I enjoyed using Ubuntu Ian Ehrman. It's faster, looks downright stunning and has a really good usability. The installation is easy and simple. I've included the download link in the description below. Do check it out. If you like this video, do consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the bell icon. This is Linux Techs, signing out.